Hey, what is going on everyone? And welcome back to Too Much Tech. And in today's video, huge shout out to MSI for sending out not one, or two, but three different gaming keyboards at a couple different price points so that we can check out what you get when you spend either a little bit less or a little bit more in terms of getting a brand new gaming keyboard from MSI. So huge shout out to them for sending out the GK30, the GK50, as well as the GK60. And we're gonna be checking all three of these out. Just gonna go into some of the notable features about each keyboard and my experience using it. A typing test, of course, you cannot skip the typing test. So you guys can hear how these keyboards sound. And we're gonna go over the MSI software as well pretty quickly so you can figure out how to control the RGB. It's very simple. It's called the Dragon Center. We'll get into it a little bit later in the video. And then at the end, I will tell you which of these three keyboards is my favorite out of the three. All right, so first on the list is the GK30. This one uses these membrane mechanical switches and basically it's a hybrid between using like a regular membrane cheap office keyboard and getting the feel of a mechanical switch while also not being as loud either as like let's say a Cherry Mix Blue, which I actually kind of like a little bit. It's definitely a little bit of a different feel. Like it's not something that you would normally be used to. It's gonna be different from a mechanical keyboard and a normal keyboard in terms of the feel and the sound of typing on this keyboard. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, these keycaps, I don't know if these are ABS or PBT or what, because I don't really know how to describe it. It feels like a mix of the two, like they almost feel like ABS, but they have like the smoothness of PBT, but they're not shining through either. And they don't really collect oil. So I will say that whatever these keycaps are, MSI did a pretty good job because they don't really retain any hand oils at all. So I like that, you know, you can just use the keyboard, not have to worry about if you got like lotion or something like that on your hands. And the keyboard, as long as your hands are pretty clean, it does not retain any dirt at all, which I like quite a bit. Now this one is water resistant as well. It's, I would say it's probably more splash resistant I don't recommend you know going and taking your keyboard in the bathtub. That's not a good idea. But if you happen to spill like a drink or something on your keyboard, don't worry about it. Just let it dry out and then you'll be good as new. Like I said, the key switch sound is pretty interesting. It's memchanical, so it's all right. Let's go ahead and do the full sound test so you guys can hear what I'm talking about. See, it doesn't sound bad, but I wouldn't say that it sounds great either. It's just different. It's not similar to anything I've ever typed on before other than another membrane mechanical keyboard. That's the closest thing that I can relate it to is just like an in-between. But one thing I will say to not be like modded at all because, well, you can't really mod these if you tried, but the switches are pretty smooth too. So that's good. It does have like a little bit of a tactile feel and it's not really necessarily clicky, I would say. It's like a mix between a linear and a very small tactile bump. Now, a couple notable things I will say about this. Um, all three keyboards have height adjustable. They have one step of height adjustability. That's pretty much it. Um, you don't have cable routing on any of the three keyboards as well, just rubberized feet at the back. And that's pretty much it. Similar to all three, you have the RGB lighting controls right here. So all you do, you hold function, you hit any of these buttons. Like let's say you wanna adjust the speed of the RGB effects right here. If you wanna change the color here, it's on the rainbow mode right now, so it's not gonna change. But if you wanna change the RGB mode, now I can go through the different colors. The brightness is gonna be right here. And then the direction of the LEDs is right here as well. Hold the function key and you can use these media playback controls up here too. So everything is very, very simple. Now, a couple of things I do have to say specifically about the GK30 is just that it's an all plastic build for the most part. So it's nothing really special for the price of around, you know, 40 to $50. You kind of would expect an all plastic build. A metal top plate would be a nice add-on, but you know, not really necessary if you're just trying to get something to get you started gaming. You got this cool little light bar right here, but the biggest problem I have about the lighting on this keyboard is just that it's not very bright. It's pretty dull in comparison to the other two MSI keyboards that I have that we're gonna get into next. But overall, I think this keyboard is not bad for about 50 bucks if you want a full size keyboard. Not a bad price. All right, so next we do have the GK50. This is a low profile keyboard. It uses these Kale 
Ooh, there we go. It uses these Kale clicky white switches. They're pretty generic. I've seen them in some other cheaper keyboards as well, and they're okay. Not my favorite because I'm just not the biggest fan of clicky switches, so I didn't really expect to like them. But you know, if they started to offer more options, I would hope that they would offer like a kale low profile red switch. That would be my preference. Now these clicky switches, these are actually pretty smooth. You don't even feel the clicky bump either. Like all it is, it just makes the sound, but it's not like a tactile switch either. Like it's very smooth all the way through, which is pretty nice. Another thing about this board as well, the RGB is significantly brighter than it was on the GK30. Like this is a lot more competitive with everything else that I would say is in the market. The controls are exactly the same. You do have a couple more RGB modes as well in terms of uh, the style and everything on this board too. So I like that a lot. It's a little bit more customizable, but not much. And then instead of the rubberized cable you get on the more budget oriented keyboard, you get this nice braided cable. It's not very flexible, but it's just keyboards so you don't really need it to be, but I do wish that it was off to the left side of the board. I actually wish that for all of them because they're all in the center. So I'm not the biggest fan of that, but just something to be said because I wish that uh, all full size keyboards would have the cable on the left because it just works a little bit better for gamers and it's easier to cable manage in my opinion. This one does feature this breast aluminum ish top plate. It doesn't quite feel like metal, like it feels a little bit cool to the touch, but not as cool to the touch as the one on the GK60. And then these keycaps, they have like this unique like octagon type shape and they look pretty nice, but these do collect just a little bit more hand oils than the GK30, which is pretty weird because I thought that they would maybe use like the same or even better keycap quality material, but these I almost feel like these are probably ABS. These are decent ABS because they're not as bad as let's say some that are on like the SteelSeries Apex Pro. Those are horrible. They look nice, but it kind of sucks because as soon as you touch the key, there's oil all over the place. So these are not like that. You can actually use this pretty comfortably and there really isn't much. But overall, the gaming and typing experience on this one, I do like quite a bit. Other than the clickiness, if these is other than the clickiness, if this was linear, it would probably be very close to perfect in my opinion. But I do like it quite a bit. Let's go ahead and roll the sound test, and then we'll get into the GK60. And then we have the GK60 here. So this one actually uses Cherry Max red switches. So traditional switch. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of Cherry switches because when you're pressing them, they're kind of scratchy. Like they're not nearly as smooth as something like a Gateron or a Kale. So I wish that they would have went with another manufacturer in terms of the switch option. But surprisingly, these keycaps are very clean. They even give you a few of these like aluminum feeling-ish keycaps over here for your WASD and they look pretty nice and they feel pretty good too. Still give you that very cold touch if you like having a uh, metal constructed keyboard. Mostly plastic build on the bottom of course and unfortunately this one does not get the braided cable that you got on the low profile GK50 which kind of sucks. The rubberized cable I think is just uh, not as nice and both keyboards are around the same price too at about 75 to 80 bucks depending on the sales but um, currently that's kind of where they are right now so I wish that uh, they would trade off some of those similar features. In terms of having a difference in features other than just changing the profile and the switches kind of unfortunate that this one there is no RGB it only has red backlighting which kind of sucks because if you don't have a black and red theme going on like I get it those are MSI's color so I I get it 110 percent but um it would be nice to have RGB because I don't really do black and red don't get me wrong it's nice but I'm more of a blue guy so if I could just change it to white LED or blue LED or blue and yellow blue and orange things of that nature 
that would just be my preference. And I just feel like nowadays at 80 bucks, it should definitely have RGB instead of just having the red backlight. So that's kind of disappointing. Again, all the lighting controls are the same, but additionally on this keyboard, you do have this little space here. So if you're using gaming headphones or something else and you want to keep the cables out of the way, you can just slide it underneath the keyboard and you can route the cables together back to your PC so you don't have a bunch of cables like going everywhere and all that good stuff. Unfortunately, the biggest gripe that I have with all three of these keyboards is that none of them are 10 keyless or 60%. I wouldn't really expect a 60% keyboard, but none of these are 10 keyless, so that kind of sucks. The next keyboard in the product line over this one is the GK70, and that one is a 10 keyless keyboard, and it does have RGB as well as Cherry MX Red. So I would assume that I would probably like that keyboard a lot better. I'll leave that one linked in the description below if you're looking for a smaller keyboard, because me personally, I just feel like full size keyboards, I don't really need to have like the number pad over here and stuff like that anymore. If I needed one, maybe I would just get a separate one or whatever, but I would just rather have a 10 keyless layout. All right, guys, so now we're in the MSI Dragon Center software. This is where you can control the different RGB lights and profiles and stuff like that too for your keyboard. Personally, I don't really feel the need to set up like multiple profiles and stuff like that, but the Dragon Center is just good, like I said, for changing the basic RGB effects, and that's pretty much all I would use it for. I'm sure if you had like an MSI motherboard and GPU and other lighting equipment from MSI in your setup, you could probably sync it all together, but I don't, unfortunately, so I can't really try that out. But I do have these three keyboards, and surprisingly, the software actually recognizes all three of them at the same time. To look at the different lighting effects so we see on the gk30 there isn't really a ton of lighting effects but surprisingly the gk30 is the only one that has this full rainbow wave effect which kind of sucks because it's not that bright i wish that it was as bright as the gk50 low profile but unfortunately if we go to the gk50 low profile there is no rainbow effect but we do have a customized option here but it only really lets you set up like static effects which is not really the best unfortunately it kind of sucks i wish that it would let me just make another wave but we do have something similar and it's just this overlap mode it's not my favorite like the rainbow mode is a favorite but i digress if you want to change like the different lighting modes like this overlap it's pretty decent it's not bad uh, I would probably just leave it on this one steady is kind of boring you know that's when it just stays one color so you can just change the color hit apply and then it'll go ahead and do it and then if we swap it over to the wave we can see that the wave is kind of plain like unfortunately you don't get a wave of like multiple colors it's not a rainbow wave it's just a single wave with one color so it's okay I don't love it, but you know, it is what it is. Horizon, you know, this is just like when you hit the keys, it just shoots the light beam across the other keys. And then the other notable one is the ripple effect. So this one's not bad too, but you know, it's just pretty standard stuff. Nothing really overly crazy. Personally, I would just leave it on the overlap mode and that would be the RGB mode that I would use myself. Now, if I'm being completely honest, which one I like the best? Honestly speaking, I like the GK50 low profile the best out of the three. I feel like this one is just the one that I would rather use the most. It's got the braided cable that just seems a bit nicer. The keycaps are not bad. The typing and gaming experience is pretty good as well. I just wish that they made a tankulous version and let it have the rainbow effect and also use red switches. And then I think it would be like almost a perfect low profile keyboard to be honest. But unfortunately, it's not the case. Just because if they use KLO profile switches, I'm sure the switches would be really smooth. And believe it or not, the clicky kale switches are actually smoother feeling than the cherry reds on the GK60. So even if I tried the GK70, I feel like I would still 
prefer these switches because they're smoother, even though those switches on the GK60 and 70 are linear. But overall, if you're in the market for a full-size keyboard, I would definitely consider one of these three. Again, my favorite is the GK50 low profile out of the three. If you're looking for the GK50, but you don't want the low profile version, there is a standard profile version that I'll leave linked in the description below so you guys can check that out as well. If you really need a tankulous keyboard, I will leave a link to the GK70 in the description as well. But again, huge shout out to MSI for sending out these three for testing and for me to figure out which one I preferred. I do like all three of them, but the GK50 is just my preference. But that is gonna be it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you are new to the channel and make sure to enable those post notifications so you don't miss any of the videos we have coming out this week. Also, if you have other questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below, as well as join my Discord where we talk about tech there all the time and it's a pretty chill place to be. But thank you guys again for tuning in and I will catch you in the next video. Thank you.